We are on to our next assignment. If we look on our course outline, we just finished our final compositing project, which had to do with animation and animating something that we had already created. Now, right before our midterms, our project that leads up into spring break, as we're now in March, is a vector assignment. And we're going to be making a black and white and color version of a logo. I call it a mashup logo because I'll give you kind of two concepts to combine into one logo. What we're going to start doing is sketching for them, and that's actually going to be proving ground number two. So our, our next proving ground helps us develop our ideas for assignment four. And then you can see we have those sketches due next class on Wednesday by midnight. But in class, we'll be learning how to make them into choosing the best sketch. We're going to do a little peer reviewing, giving input to, to each other. So that's why you need to come with the sketches. And we're going to be learning how to take our best sketch and start turning it into a vector. Then we're going to be preparing images to print once we finished our vector and learned how to color it. And you're all going to be required to print your, your logo, either your black and white version or your color version, for our midterm critique, which happens after spring break on the same day of our midterm exam on the 23rd. So lots to do with this project. Why vectors are so wonderful is from one file, you can print it at any size. So it's a perfect file to require you to print. So you can see the difference between printing a vector, getting that print ready, and printing a, a raster image, which would be one of the other two prints you do for your midterm critique will be from your exercises or your assignments so far. OK. You can also see that in our course outline, I say the units that we're covering. So let's go to those units to get the full introduction to the project. That's under unit modules. We can get directly to it under assignments. But we're going to go to unit 9 and vector design. And there is a question of the day to help us think about vectors. It just asks you, what advantages does vector-based imagery have over raster-based imagery? Basically, when do you want to design something as a vector versus when do you want to make it based on pixels, right? And when would using a vector-based image be more effective than a pixel-based image? Logos are a prime example of, of this. It has to do with its versatility and scalability. But we will learn more about it through doing it. Here are some examples. We start with sketches, first thumbnail sketches, which is the proving ground, but then a refined sketch. Then based on the refined sketch, a black shape vector, and then a color version of that black shape vector. Here we can see the rough and refined sketches all in the same place, but they took their, their best design, made it into a vector, and then added color. Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. All of these are different themes from different semesters. So what is the theme for this semester? Our theme for spring 2022 is science and technology. So it doesn't seem like much of a mashup, but it's for the new STEM building. And the larger kind of theme is wonders large and small. That's the mural that this is going to be contributing to. If you click here, you can see the Google Slides of these mural projects. We did one last semester. This is the second one. This will be on the second floor landing. Once it loads, I'll skip right to it. And these black examples are ones that fit the science and technology theme. I also had a little animation there. But they can be anything that you think relates to science and technology as a fairly simple black shape vector. Logos are not meant to be illustrations. They're not meant to be t-shirts. They're not meant to be stickers. They're meant to be kind of branding, icons, right? So it needs to work as a black shape. Now, for a little background, I, I created a Behance mood board with some professional examples. Behance is Adobe's kind of portfolio sharing site. 
and anyone can create a Behance. It doesn't cost anything. You don't even need to own Adobe software to do it. But what's great about it is this is where professionals and amateurs, but mostly professionals, post their work. And these were ones that I thought were, were kind of nice examples. This is where I got some of those examples of different approaches to logo design from. And you can see how different this is than what we've been doing, creating kind of visual identities, branding, logo design, website design, these kind of things. This is what logos are great for. They're versatile. They can be put on products. They can be printed at any size. So you might get ideas from these. I, I have a wide range of them. Because it's technology as well, it's not just science things. You can get inspiration from lots of different places. Okay, and then if we look at what the actual project is, it's using uh, student responses. We surveyed the, the students that are gonna be using the new STEM building. And these were some of the things they wanted to see. We already covered the main things of Nighthawk soaring, flying and, um, in our first mural last semester. So these might be some places for you to think, like science things, that's pretty general. So that breaks out into things like chemicals, microscopes, astronomy, telescopes, mathematics, galaxies, microscopic fossils, chemical reactions, magnifying glass, studying, researching, formulas, equations, stars, planets, lots of different things to be inspired by, right? In your own personality. That's why we, we chose the theme uh, scientific wonders, large and small. So everything from like microscopic stuff to Hubble Space Telescope things, cosmic events, chemical bonds and electrical structures. The one thing that the building committee asks us to keep in mind is biology will not be in this building. Biology will be in our, our old science building. So they don't want us to, to lean too much on biology, which a lot of artists do because that's our natural world, or just like the natural world. So this is our assignment. We have a wall that is nine feet, eight inches tall by nine foot, one and a half inches wide. It has a four inch base strip that will be like a neutral putty color. This is on the second floor at the landing of the stairs as you go up in the new building. And so I, as art director, I have to come up with the vector design that will kind of frame it all. And this is what I sketched and the committee approved. It's kind of a scientific technology, manufacturing, workforce, computer science, all of it's in this building. You got chemistry. I might get rid of the DNA because maybe that's a little too close to biology. Right? And maybe do like chemical bonds or something. And so this is a sketch. I have my own little version of Nico here, like kind of running through it, right? So it's not too generic and clip arty. So that's my sketch. I also then added like a little hand with a microscope, a little empowerment there, and some astral bodies here, some gears. And now the process, which I'm still working on, is turning this into a vector, right? The same way you'll be making logos, I'm making a much bigger structure with these lines and and repetitions on this kind of grid-based design pattern. This is where it's at right now. My hope is in coloring it and finishing off, these were some like early tests. I liked this one a lot. Some from taking like microscopic photography and vectorizing it. Some from taking like illustrations of galaxies, seeing how they did it. It's gonna be colorful but we want lots of patterns and textures and your logos are gonna be layered into the patterns and textures. I might even be able, depending on your logos, I might be able to make like a wallpaper pattern of them and use that at different scales repeated throughout the design. So vectors allow you that kind of versatility. What we did the last semester was each student made their, their vector shaped logos as just black shapes and then 
those got integrated into this. This is a much bigger, like 20 foot wide mural. So these were all their logos kind of combined, which looks pretty chaotic. It's like weather systems, but you can see the Nighthawk images kind of coming through the clock tower of the building. And then those got layered over these other images of soaring flight. More observational images of citizen scientists taking photos of Nighthawks. And so we got this as our final, which worked really well because it's for an interior space, a study room. It's big, but we didn't want it to be super graphically overwhelming, right? We get to be a little bit more visual impact being on the landing of a staircase. So, but some details, you can see how the students' vectors are layered into the overall patterns across these different tiles. All right, so those are some of the themes to play with. So how do we go about it in the proving ground? So you start by sketching. And we're going to post our sketches here. And I want you to sketch in three different ways or with three approaches in mind. It's not the only way that you can do logo design, but it's a really good introduction, introductory way to do it. So I have some Google Slides here that will go through that. But basically, just to use last semester as an example, there are dynamic logos which are meant to feel like they're moving. The Nike swoosh is probably the most well-known dynamic logo. It moves the eye across it. It doesn't try to hold it in. There are central symmetrical logos. Target is the quintessential central symmetrical logo, right? Where Everything's growing from the center. It's made to hold your attention there. But central symmetrical can also play with symmetry. It doesn't need to be absolute symmetry. And it's just everything in the design is, is balanced from the middle and kind of equalized out. So I see these as dynamic. Usually diagonals and curves are common in dynamic logos. These as central symmetrical, even though they're not perfect sy symmetry. And then another approach, which can be really fun to sketch and play with, is a play of positive and negative space. So since you're cutting this out of black paper, basically, you just have black shapes, you can make a secondary image with the negative space that's created by the black space. So I just tried to mock something up really quickly. This idea of this beaker with this um, uh, binary code on a little ticket, but you see, it goes behind the beaker and turns black, and you're not really sure what's foreground, what's background. It just makes the space a little bit more dynamic. Last semester for that mural was dynamic clouds and soaring flight. So these were my sketch examples, right? Now remember, I sketched in pencil. I have that here, right? But to turn them into black shaped vectors, you're not going to do outline drawings. Outline drawings don't hold up at all the different scales. You want this to work really small and really big. So think of it as shapes of black. So I, I kind of mocked them up in the computer and just kind of filled these shapes in with black because that's what your logo will actually be. From your sketches, both one that's central symmetrical, one that's dynamic. I kind of liked this one, but it didn't really fit into any category perfectly and one that played with positive and negative space, like the, the black clouds making up a, a shape of a, of a bird on the moon. This was the one I selected. So then that's your refined sketch. And then we trace a vector of it. Huge difference is that the vector is perfectly clean at any scale. Once we've done that, then we can make a color version of the vector. We can also add layer styles like strokes, drop shadows, effects. And we can try different color versions. This is the one we, I finished with, right? And that's the project. So what is it going to be for science and technology? It's so wide open, and we really want it not to look like generic clip art, right? So the whole idea is to have your personality into a subject matter that could be very generic. So that's tricky. So research different logos that you might like and go from there. 